Hi, this is Scott with AirMax. Here to share some installation tips for your Solar Series battery backup aeration system. The procedures outlined in this video will not only ensure the best results for performance and operation of your solar aeration system, but will also provide the most effective methods for securing your Easy Mount solar panel assembly. Refer to your Solar Series aeration product manual for a complete list of tools and hardware required. Before deciding on a location for the Easy Mount assembly, be sure that the hole for the galvanized pole will not interfere with any underground utilities or irrigation systems. Select a location that is well above the high water mark with optimum southern exposure. The location should remain clear of any obstructions such as shrubbery, trees, fences, or buildings that could limit exposure. Next, use a post hole digger or auger to create an 8 inch to 10 inch diameter hole. The hole should be a minimum of 36 inches deep. This depth should leave you approximately 84 inches above grade for your easy mount assembly. Use a 5 8 inch drill bit to drill a hole through the pole 8 to 10 inches up from the bottom. It may be helpful to pre-drill a pilot hole with a smaller drill bit first. Insert a piece of half inch rebar into the hole so that an equal amount shows on each side. Hold the rebar in place with tape or a zip tie to keep it centered until the post is set. This step is important to keep the post from rotating in the concrete under high wind conditions. We also advise against the use of pre-cut cardboard tubes inside the holes for the same reason. The use of such tubes can lead to the entire cylinder of concrete rotating under windy conditions. Mix concrete and water in a wheelbarrow according to the manufacturer's recommendations. Place the post in the center of the hole and pour concrete into the hole until it's approximately 4-6 to six inches below grade. Keeping concrete slightly below grade will prevent curbing, which can lead to heaving during springtime frost in colder climates. Plumb the post with a level and brace using 2x4 studs, clamps, and stakes. Allow a minimum of 48 hours cure time before installing the AirMax Easy Mount assembly and solar panels. We recommend installing a ground rod while the concrete cures. Drive an 8-foot grounding rod into the ground 8 to 10 inches away from the inside edge of the concrete, leaving approximately 6 inches exposed above grade. This rod will be used later in the grounding section of the installation procedure. The rod can be driven below grade after the rest of the system is installed and properly grounded. Before installing your Easy Mount assembly, we recommend digging a trench for your airline. In this installation, we will be using PVC pipe to run our Easy Set weighted airline as opposed to using direct burial airline from solar panels to shore. If the distance between the cabinet and the shore is more than 5 feet, you can use direct burial airline. Place the airline in the trench from the post to the pond's edge. There must be a separate run of airline for each diffuser that will be installed. Join multiple sections of direct burial airline using 5 8 connector kits. If using a remote manifold, be sure to watch the remote manifold installation video at airmaxeco.com slash remote manifold. To begin installing your AirMax Easy Mount system, first establish the recommended height for the main assembly by measuring down 3 inches from the top of the post and marking it with a pencil or marker. If installing with one person, we recommend clamping a 2x4 block 4-6 to six inches long to the post at the 3 inch mark using a large clamp. This block will provide a shelf for the upper beam of the Easy Mount main assembly to rest on while installing the U-bolts in the next step. First, rest the Easy Mount assembly upper beam on your block and secure in place using the two U-bolts, washers, lock washers, and nuts. Tighten one half turn past hand tight using a 3 quarter inch deep well socket wrench. Secure the lower pole mount beam with the second U-bolt and tighten one half turn past hand tight. Leave the U-bolts loose enough to pivot the assembly. Solar South is determined by the pivot angle needed to achieve optimum southern exposure based on geographical regions. To do this, calculate the offset for Magnetic South. You can reference the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration website included in the product manual to calculate this offset based on your zip code. Or you can estimate your pivot angle based on your approximate location using the magnetic declination map of the continental U.S. Pivot the Easy Mount assembly in the desired direction to face solar cell based on the recommended angle for your region and tighten all four U-bolts securely using a 3 quarter inch deep well socket wrench. Use the latitude of your region to set the optimal tilt angle. Some smartphone compass apps will include your latitude and longitude on the screen or you can refer back to the NOAA website recommended in the product manual. If neither of these options are possible, you can also refer to the table in the product manual to estimate your latitude and recommended tilt angle. 
If you will not be running your system in winter months, then simply use your latitude as your reference point and set your tilt angle to the angle closest to your latitude. However, if you plan to run your system all year, take your latitude and add between 10 and 15 degrees when setting your tilt angle to get optimum performance when daylight hours are at their shortest. For example, 42 degree latitude should be set to the 55 or 60 degree setting on the Easy Mount support rail. This will give you the optimum tilt angle in winter months when daylight hours are reduced by 50%. Solar panels will receive ample sunlight during the other seasons, even when set for winter operation. Next, refer to the tilt angle settings in your product manual and attach your tilt support strut to the appropriate hole in the panel support rail. The angle settings are based off the difference from the horizontal plane. Remove the tilt support hardware from the temporary location on the support rail. Secure each support strut in place with the tilt support hardware and tighten completely using two 3 quarter inch wrenches. Continue by installing a panel support rail extension. First, remove two bolts, lock washers and nuts from the end of the rail extension connector to attach to the panel support rail. Tighten using one 7 16 inch wrench and one 7 16 inch socket wrench. Repeat for the opposite side. Lastly, tighten the four pivot bracket bolts using a 3 quarter inch socket wrench. First, position a single sided solar panel clamp at the bottom edge of one panel support rail extension and tighten using a 7 16 inch wrench. Do not tighten the top hex bolt as you will need room to slip the bottom edge of the solar panel frame into the clamp. Repeat for the second panel support rail extension. Position one double-sided solar panel clamp at the joint between the panel support rail and the rail extension. Place the second double-sided clamp in the same position on the opposite support rail. Next, position a single-sided solar panel clamp at the top edge of one panel support rail and hand tighten only. Repeat for the last single-sided clamp. We recommend using two people when handling and installing solar panels. Avoid installing solar panels on windy days to prevent possible accidental damage to equipment. Position the first solar panel on the two lower single-sided clamps, making sure the face of the solar panel frame is beneath the clamp. Hand tighten each clamp. Next, loosen the double-sided clamp from the rail on each side. Then position the clamp so that they seat against the top frame of the solar panel. Secure the clamps to the rail, but leave the top hex bolt loose to allow for positioning of the next solar panel. Position the second solar panel atop the double-sided clamps, making sure that the wiring junction boxes face the same direction as the lower panel and hand tighten. Then, slide the top two single-sided clamps down until they seat against the top frame of the upper solar panel. Secure the clamp to the rail with a 7 16 inch wrench, but leave the top hex bolts only hand tight. Use your tape measure to center both the upper and lower solar panels widthwise on the panel support rails. It should measure approximately 17 and a half inches from support rail to solar panel frame on each side. Once the panels are properly centered, secure all clamps using a 7 16 inch wrench, but do not over tighten. Tighten all the bolts securing the clamps to the rail, as well as the upper bolt securing the solar panels in place. To properly ground the system, first attach a grounding lug to the center grounding location of each solar panel using the screw and nut provided. Tighten using a Phillips screwdriver. Feed one end of the 12 foot copper grounding wire through each of the solar panel grounding lugs and secure in place using a slotted screwdriver. Next, slide one ground rod clamp onto the opposite end of the 12 foot copper grounding wire. Loosen the bolt on the ground rod clamp and attach it to one of the U-bolts on the Easy Mount assembly and secure in place, making sure the grounding wire is making good contact with the U-bolt. Be sure to leave some slack in the cable in case the solar panel tilt angle should ever be changed. Feed the remainder of the grounding cable down the pole and attach it in three to four places using the zip ties provided. Next, feed the grounding cable through a ground rod clamp and temporarily secure in place on the top of the stake. The grounding cable from the cabinet will be secured at this same clamp in a later step. We recommend a final grade and surface prep to prevent possible future damage to equipment during lawn maintenance, as well as to prevent excess vegetation growth. To do this, simply cover the areas surrounding the solar panel mounting system with ground fabric and top with stone or mulch. Place the cabinet on the ground near the solar mounting setup with the back side of the cabinet facing the pond or lake. The side of the cabinet with the external shutoff switch should be positioned so that it is within 48 inches of the grounding rod. Level the composite cabinet base as needed. To prevent possible injury, 
Cover solar panels with either cardboard, blankets, or towels to prevent any voltage transmission through the solar panel cables during installation. First, make sure the external shutoff switch is in the off position. Using the MC4 cables provided, wire the panels in series. To do this, connect the positive wire from the cabinet switch to the positive lead on the first solar panel. Connect the negative lead from the first solar panel to the positive lead from the second solar panel. Connect the negative lead from the second solar panel to the negative wire from the cabinet switch. Connect the ground wire coming from the external shutoff switch to the ground rod clamp at the grounding rod. The grounding rod can now be driven down until it is flush with the ground. Now it's time to connect and place our airlines. Connect the airlines to the cabinet flex tubes using 3 8 to 5 8 couplers and hose clamps. Again, refer to the remote manifold manual or video if installing a remote manifold. Backfill the trench in a few areas to temporarily keep the airline in place until installation is complete. Unroll the Easy Set weighted airline and remove any twists. Join enough sections of the weighted airline using 5 8 connector kits so that the airline can rest on the bottom of the pond from the pond's edge out to the planned location for each diffuser. If using direct burial airline or remote manifold, connect the weighted airline to either the direct burial or the remote manifold at the pond's edge. Assemble the Pro Air 2 diffusers by threading the diffuser sticks onto each diffuser and adding the 5 8 barb adapter into the check valve. Be sure all diffusers and fittings are hand tight but did not over tighten. You can now attach the diffuser to the airline. At this time, we recommend turning on the system to allow airflow to the diffusers while placing in the pond. First, remove the cardboard, blankets, or towels covering the solar panels. To start up the system, open the cabinet lid and connect the MPPT to the Wago harness by inserting the red wire. Then wait for the blue blinking light to indicate that there is battery power to the MPPT. Then turn the external switch to the on position. Turn the internal toggle switch to the on position. Next, close the second ball valve. There will be enough battery life to begin powering the compressor and moving air out to the first diffuser. Place the diffuser in the desired location of the pond using one of two methods. If installing from a boat, have one person on shore guiding the airline as a second person, using a boat or raft, extends the airline out to the area of the pond where the diffusers will be located. Gently lower the diffuser to the pond bottom using the weighted airline to ensure that the Pro Air 2 diffuser remains upright. The same can be achieved by lowering the diffuser using nylon rope. For smaller ponds, you may choose to install the diffusers from the shore. To do this, have one person guide the airline while another walks around the pond with the diffuser. Then, thread nylon rope through the diffuser manifold handle. Use the nylon rope to gently guide the diffuser into place. Once set, release one side of the nylon rope and pull to shore. Repeat the process for the second diffuser. Bubbles should be noticeable on the pond surface from each diffuser location. Adjust the airflow on the blue manifold inside the cabinet to balance airflow between the diffusers if necessary. A diffuser in deeper water will always require more airflow than diffusers in shallower water, so one ball valve may be more open than the other. If using a remote manifold, cabinet ball valves will remain wide open and airflow can be adjusted from the remote manifold ball valves at the pond's edge. Once all adjustments have been made, close the cabinet lid and lock using one of the keys provided. The system can run up to 24 hours per day. However, it is important that you follow the slow start procedure outlined in the product manual. A gradual start will help prevent possible fish kills from rapid turnover of harmful gases that have been trapped in the lower regions of the water body. Continuous operation should not begin until the seventh day. Refer to the product manual for information on how to link the MPPT to your smartphone or tablet to view system status and history. Be sure to follow the procedures outlined in the product manual for system shutdown, maintenance, or troubleshooting. Following the procedures outlined in this video or the product manual will help you get the most out of your AirMax Solar Series aeration system. If you have any questions regarding your AirMax Solar Series battery backup system, feel free to reach out to AirMax customer service. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out the rest of our solar product offerings at airmaxeco.com.